let's do a problem with a table. So this one, even though we don't have the picture, all we really need are the two points, and then we can calculate the slope of the line between them. So for this one, we'll actually use the formula. And remember the slope formula, that's just that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's that change in y over change in x. But you might also see it in that function notation, f of x2 minus f of x1. That's just the difference in the y values. It's the same thing as this, divided by x2 minus x1. So we're going to look at these endpoints when x is minus 4, we'll call that x1, and x2 is when x is 5. So we need those values. So at negative 4, the y value is 2, and at 5, the y value is 4. So let's use the formula. So the slope, or the average rate of change between these two points. So we know for x2 and y2, that's this one. So we'll put 4 for y2, and we're going to subtract y1, which is 2. And in the bottom, we have 5 for x2 minus x1, but that's negative 4. So we're subtracting a negative. So it becomes 2 over 5 plus 4, which is 9. So 2 ninths would be the average rate of change over this interval. And remember, you want to be able to interpret that. It essentially means every time you go over 9 units, that you go up two units. So it's roughly upward sloping. So let's keep going. We'll do another one of these with a table. And this one is a long one. It's wondering which interval does g have a negative average rate of change. So we could put this in our inequality notation. We have minus 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to minus 1. So that's going to be when x is minus 4, we have the point minus 4 comma 2. And when x is minus 1, we have a y value of 5. Now for these, you could use the formula. And for the first one, I will. But ultimately, remember the slope is the change in the y over the change in the x. And you can always set the change in the x so that it's a positive number, because you can define which one is x2 and x1. So this would be x2, this would be x1. When we subtract negative 4, you'd end up adding it, and you get 3. So the x values actually go up 3 from this one to this one. And the change in the y values, to get a negative average rate of change, you want that change in y values itself to be negative. So let's just plug in for a, this first one, into our slope formula, which we can use the letter m from y equals mx plus b that slope intercept form for lines. And we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The y value at point 2 would be 5. And the y value at point 1 would be 2. So you get 5 minus 2 up there, and you get minus 1 minus negative 4, which, like I mentioned, becomes plus 4, and you just get 3 there and 3 there. And so the average rate of change over this interval is just 1. So it's not negative. Now, you don't have to use this formula every time. You could just think this through. So as x increases, is y going down? And if it is, then you have a negative average rate of change. But if y goes up like it does here, then you have a positive average rate of change. So we'll look at these endpoints. So when you have an x value of 1, the y value is 0. And when you have an x value of 5, because remember, these are just the x values for the end of your interval. When you plug in 5, you get 2. And notice, as x gets bigger, it goes from 1 to 5, the y values go from 0 to 2. So they get bigger as well, which means that it has a positive average rate of change. Now for this one, if you plug in minus 5, the y value is 0. And when you plug in 0, the y value is 3. But this one is also positive because the x values go from minus 5 to 0. They increase. And the y values go from 0 to 3. They increase as well, so that's another positive average rate of change. And lastly, choice D, we know it's right by process of elimination, but we need to feel comfortable about that, so we should check it. So minus 2 is at a y value of 7, and 3 is at a y value of minus 5. So this one, as the x values go bigger, they go from minus 2 to 3, they jump up 5, 
the y values go down. They go from 7 to minus 5. So they actually go down 12 units. So if you were to actually calculate this average rate of change for that one, that's choice D, we can confirm that it's positive. The slope of the line drawn between these two points, let's call this one Y2 and this one Y1, so X2 and X1. So you get minus 5 minus 7 divided by 3 minus negative 2. And you'd get minus 12 divided by 3 plus 2, which is 5. So minus 12 fifths is the average rate of change on this interval. And that concludes that choice letter D would be the correct answer.